والصلاة وتم التسليم على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين اللهم علمنا ما ينفعنا وانفعنا بما علمتنا وزدنا علما وعملا متقبلا يا أرحم الراحمين Oh Allah, teach us what benefit us, increase us in knowledge, in good morals, and in good deeds. Ya Arham ar So we continue by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's blessings in, this, uh, in these reflections on Ayat al-Kursi. And we reached by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's blessings, tafsir of the word al-Qayyum. As we mentioned, Ayat al-Kursi is the greatest ayah, is very, very, very important for the Muslim say it every day before you go to bed uh, when you wake up after every salah so the more you reflect on this ayah and repeat it is very is very uh, difficult on shaitan as we also mentioned right one of the most uh, frightening things for shaitan is ayat al-kursi he runs away from Ayat al-Kursi, right? Uh, and why it's the greatest surah? We mentioned the greatest ayah. We mentioned because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is talking about himself. He is introducing himself to us, subhanahu wa ta'ala. And by the way, many people claim they believe in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, but their, their belief is invalid belief. Because they did not believe in Allah who is, who is perfect. They believe in Allah, they believe in a God, but this God for them, he has, he has deficiencies, he has imperfections. He comes in a form of a man. He gets conceived. I don't know who, conce- who make, made him conce- who made Virgin Mary be conceived with the God. If he's the God, then she, I mean, sometimes the people attribute a lot of imperfection to God, then they say we believe in God. But that's not the true belief in God. Not any belief in God is really a true belief and an accepted belief in God, right? So Allah, the the one that we believe in Him, has these descriptions and these attributes that are mentioned in Ayat al-Kursi. Allah has all perfection. Doesn't is not limited by time or place or space. Uh, is not limited to a form, right? Uh, but th- they argue, they say Allah is able to do everything. He can do anything He wants. If you say He cannot do certain things, then you're limiting Him. This is the argument of some of the brothers. Well, we say, can Allah create a God like Him? <laughs> if they say if you say Allah cannot be and it is imperfect for him to be in a form of a man as they claim that Jesus Christ is God in the came in the form of a man and was born and even when he was born he was born as man and God at the same time which doesn't make sense of course but they say you're limiting him because he can do anything, he can be in a form of a man. But we say, no, that is imperfection. And that is impossible. Why? Because you're limiting him, subhanahu wa ta'ala. You're making him like a creature, and the creator cannot be like the creatures. And also, they have the other, the other problems that, now, which, the will of who is, is working? When he is a man and a god at the same time. Which will is that which is there? Is it the will of him as a man or as a God? If it is the will of him, if it is the will of his person as a God, then why he needs, why then he's coming in the form of a man? If he's in the form of a man and his will is the will of the God, then he will not be a good example for us. Because they say he came so that we follow him. If he comes and he's having the will of the God, then he is not a good example because he doesn't have the will like us which can be uh, overcome by desires etc etc and if they say he is the will he had the will of the of a man then he's not a god he lost that will of the god he's not a, a a god in that sense 
right? So it, it doesn't make sense. It's full of fallacies and full of contradictions and full of illogical, illogical uh, reasoning. So uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is able to do everything. But there are things as the scholars, for example, having another God, is that possible or impossible? Having two gods, is that something possible or impossible, logically? To have two gods is absolutely impossible, right? And Allah mentioned in the Quran, by the way, إِذَا لَذَهَبَ كُلُّ إِلَٰهٍ بِمَا خَلَقْ وَلَعَلَىٰ بَعْضُهُمْ عَلَىٰ بَعْضٍ If there were other than one God, then لَذَهَبَ كُلُّ إِلَٰهٍ بِمَا خَلَقْ Then every God will, will take what he created and they will fight. This is the meaning, of, the approximate meaning of the ayah. So the logical possibilities, if there are two gods, they will either agree on everything 100, 100%, then they are one. And if they don't, then one of them will be superior over the other and the one who is superior is the God and the other is not a God. This is very brief and simple, concise uh, explanation of, the, of what the scholars mentioned in details in, 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 the, in Islamic theology. So it's impossible logically to have two gods, right? Another thing, is it possible that the God is not there, that there is no God? It's also impossible, right? There must be a God. There must be a creator, right? There must be a creator, right? So that is, these two things, for example, they're called impossible. Mustahilat. Mustahilat. I'm just giving you two examples to see the, the, the argument of, of those people. The first one is that the existence of another God, that is absolutely impossible. And the second pos uh, impossibility or mustahil is the non-existence of the Creator. Tamam? Now, if we say, we say He, he, he subhanahu wa ta'ala is able to do everything. So He has power over everything and can do everything He wants and anything He wants. But this power is not related to the mustahilat. It doesn't apply to the mustahilat. What does that mean? You cannot say, can he create another God similar to him? We say the question is wrong because his power is not related to the mustahil, to these impossible things. It's impossible. We don't say he can, yes he can, or no he cannot. <laughs> we say the question is wrong. Same thing, can he negate himself or can he cause death to himself? You see? If you say he can, that is wrong. If you say he cannot, that is also wrong. You should say that the question is wrong. The question is wrong because his power is not related to the impossible things. The, Im the, the, the universally, logically impossible things. Moving a mountain is not impossible for Allah, right? So the impo that look impossible for us, right? You understand? You should not mix between the two things. When we're talking about the impossible things, universally and logically. Like the, 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 the absence of a creator, and the existence of another, of two creators or two gods. These are impossible things. So with the same logic, we say, it's wrong to say that uh, God, he can do everything. So he can be in a form of a man. Same thing, becoming in a form of a man that is attributing imperfection to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this is what they say, uh, he say he slept and he got tired and he did this and he did that and he was born and, and, and he came from where we came from. That is God, that is, that is imperfection, that is limitation, that is degradation, that is disgracing, that is this, right? That, is, that doesn't apply to the creator. And, and also how these, if he's having all these, 
human characteristics, then then where are the divine characteristics then? Right? And many, many, many other fallacies you have to be aware of that one of the main ones is incarnation. That God can never ever come in a form of a thing, a physical body, a human thing, right? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is far beyond any, indefic any deficiency or any imperfection or blemish such as this one. I'll give you one last example to make it clear, uh, closer also to your minds. If I tell you, can, see, can you smell this color? What's the answer? Exactly. So the question is wrong because the smelling is not related to colors. It's related to things that can be smelled. You see? Same thing. The power of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is not related to everything. It's related to things that we call it wajib and ja'iz. Things that are necessary to happen and things that are possibly to happen. But it's not related to things that are impossible to happen. And this is not deficiency in his power in any way. No, that's absolutely his ultimate perfection. Right? That is his ultimate perfection, subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is a little bit detailed theo theology, but I think, I hope I made it clear and simple. Okay. So, Allah has all perfection, as we explained. La ilaha illahu. There is none worthy of worship but him. We mentioned the word ilah. It is the one who's adored, the one who's loved, the one who's worshipped, the one that you turn to, the one that you... Also the word ilah, the one who's transcendent, who's beyond our imagination, the one who amazes the minds. Subhanahu wa ta'ala. La ilaha illahu. al hay the living, and by whom everything lives. Al-Qayyum, we said Al-Qayyum is Al-Qa'imu bi nafsihi, alladhi yaqoomu bihi kullu mawjood. The one who is self-dependent, right? Self-dependent and self-subsisting, by whom all subsist, everything subsists and persists and exists by him, subhanahu wa ta'ala. لا يتصور وجود شيء ولا دوام وجوده إلا به. You can never imagine the existence or the persistence of anything without him. سبحانه وتعالى. That is القيوم. And we also said القيوم as you remember from what the word قيوم comes from the word what قام right right قام means he stood. And and this is a metaphor as we mentioned when someone is standing. Me, uh, sorry, it's a metaphor for what? For managing the affairs of people and of the creation. And why this word is used? Because when you are, when you are, like managing something, right? When you are taking care of something, usually what do you do? Usually you are standing, right? Right? Not like now, to just manage and supervise everything through the cameras and the videos, <laughs> right? They're sitting and just they're watching. No, usually. In the old days, when someone is supervising, taking care of, managing, checking, usually he's standing. So they, this is where this word comes from, right? But we said this is an intensive form of qiyam. He's not only qa'im, he's ex it's intensively, he's absolutely qayyum. And we said other forms is what qayyam. You remember we mentioned in the hadith last time. Uh, Rasulullah said, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Anta Qayyam as Samawat wal Ard. And also said, Qayyim, right? All these are intensive forms, right? Forms of intens intensiveness. So, لتدبير شؤون الناس. He said, for example, Subhanahu wa ta'ala, Surah Al Ra'ad, chapter uh, Ayah 33, uh, chapter 13, Ayah 33, he said, Subhanahu wa ta'ala, أَفَمَنْ هُوَ قَائِمٌ عَلَىٰ كُلِّ نَفْسٍ بِمَا كَسَبَتْ See? أَفَمَنْ هُوَ قَائِمٌ عَلَىٰ كُلِّ نَفْسٍ بِمَا كَسَبَتْ قَائِمٌ عَلَىٰ كُلِّ نَفْسٍ He is رقيب The protector, the preserver, the supervisor, the manager, the caretaker, the subsistent, the sustainer, the maintainer 
of every soul qa'imun ala kulli nafsin mudaf al mudaf ilayh right kulli nafsin every single soul bima kasabat is he is completely watchful and sustaining and maintaining right to every soul in what it does and in what it earns right so qa'im ala kulli nafsin بما كسبت. Allah subhanahu wa taala is saying here. أفا من هو قائم على كل نفس بما كسبت means is the one who's watchful and knowledgeable and maintaining and sustaining every soul in in all of its affairs. Like the one who doesn't or like the one who isn't. This is the 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 خبر uh, is. Is implied. أَفَمَنْ هُوَ قَائِمٌ عَلَى كُلِّ نَفْسٍ بِمَا كَسَبَتْ Is the one who is taking care of every soul, supervising, watchful, knowledgeable, means like the one who is not. Then Allah says, so this is why it's better to stop here. Then you say, وَجَعَلُوا لِلَّهِ شُرَكَاءُ And yet, even though it's only Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who is supervising and sustaining and maintaining and watchful, Yet they made partners to him. They ascribed partners to him. And that is also attributing deficiency and imperfection to Allah. Why? If you if he has partners, means what? He needs help. He needs help. The creator is in no need. Huwal Ghani. And also why he comes in a form of a human? He cannot teach us by sending a prophet who is a human. Well, yes. So why you limit him? and ascribe deficiency to him subhanahu wa ta'ala and we don't know honestly they have many there are many questions they have no answers for like he came in a form of a human then the father remained there where he is or he just transformed into this form <laughs> and when he many questions they have no answer this is why they say it's secret they say you have it is faith you just have to believe in it if the Holy Spirit comes in you, then you will just believe in it. Who is the Holy Spirit? He's, who is also part of the God. So that means you become like God. Yeah, yeah. He, 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 he falls in you. He comes into you, inside you. Are they sure that's not shaitan and <laughs> that's the Holy Spirit? Exactly, this is it. Yeah. This is a shaitan inserted there and he's just... And, but alhamdulillah, many of them, yeah, they're rejecting this... this Yani, this theology or this belief because it doesn't make any sense in logic or in, in and this is why many many Europeans now they're rejecting this belief completely and even some many Americans they're just rejecting this because it's not making sense for them and many of them converting so but we we need to talk to these people with logic and reason and, and philosophy so that hopefully they will they will realize that the shortcoming of what they're ascribing to to the Creator Subhanahu wa Taala. So, al maqsud as Imam Ibn Ashur says, what is the purpose of this attribute, which is al qayyum, is ifbat umum al ilm lahu wa kamal al hayati wa ibtal ilahiyat al asnaf. That confirming the ultimate knowledge, because he's supervising means he's what he has ultimate knowledge and power. And full life, the perfect life, subhanahu wa ta'ala. Wa kamalul haya. And negating the godship of the idols. Right? Ayat al Kursi, with all of these attributes uh, and this emphasis to show the disbelievers, the pagans, that your gods have nothing of these attributes, so they cannot be gods. Right? Afaman huwa qa'imun ala kulli nafsin bima kasabat. وَجَعَلُوا لِلَّهِ شُرَكَاءُ Then Allah says, قُلْ سَمُّهُمْ Say, call them, name them. أَمْ تُنَبِّئُونَهُ بِمَا لَا يَعْلَمُ فِي الْأَرْضِ أَمْ بِظَاهِرٍ مِّنَ الْقَوْلِ Or you're trying to tell him of what he doesn't know on earth. Means he knows everything, subhanahu wa ta'ala. بَلْ زُيِّنَ لِلَّذِينَ كَفَرُوا مَكْرُهُمْ This is their deception has been decorated and beautified for them. This false belief has been beautified for them and made it beautiful. And uh, he, he sacrificed himself for us, for our sins. 
right? And they bring some like, like uh, interpretations to make this look like beautiful. He sac he sacrificed for us. He killed his son for us. He made he sacrificed his son for us. لا حول ولا قوة إلا بالله. Was عن السبيل and they were pushed away from the way, from the path, from the right path. وَمَا يُضْلِ لِلَّهُ فَمَا لَهُ مِنْ هَادٍ And whoever Allah allows to go astray, he will not have any guide besides Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So, أَفَمَنْ هُوَ قَائِمٌ عَلَىٰ كُلِّ نَفْسٍ بِمَا كَسَبَتْ means, is the one who is watchful, who is protecting every soul, who is knowledgeable of every soul, knowing what it's doing, whether evil or good, and nothing can be hidden from him, is the one who has all these great characteristics like the one who doesn't? course not so this is al-qayyum this is al-qayyum subhanahu wa ta'ala qa'imun ala kulli nafsin mutawalliha wa mudabbiruha fi jami'i shu'unihah the one who's taking care of it in and managing all of its affairs in creation and in the time of death and in sustenance and in provision and knowing all of its affairs and all of its deeds this is qa'imun and more intensive form is Qayyum. Qayyum. He's the one who has, who's, who does all of these with, with the ultimate perfection. Subhanahu wa ta'ala. أَفَمَنْ هُوَ قَائِمٌ عَلَىٰ كُلِّ نَفْسٍ بِمَا كَسَبَتْ With all of its doing, he is sustaining. With everything you're doing, he's the one who's sustaining and maintaining and watching everything you're doing. Subhanahu wa ta'ala. أَفَمَنْ هُوَ قَائِمٌ عَلَىٰ كُلِّ نَفْسٍ بِمَا كَسَبَتْ And also in this ayah, uh, Shaykh Ibn Ashur, he's mentioning very nice meaning that that also he's taking care of every soul bima kasabat with what it is earning. So he's saying there's a, not an indication that this care and supervision and sustenance from the Creator to every soul it suits the deeds that this soul is doing. So if it is doing the good, then that sustenance or supervision or care it will be with love and kindness and care and pleasure with what this soul is doing. And the traces or the manifestations of this pleasure from Allah towards that soul is manifested in happiness that this soul will find. SubhanAllah. And this is why he mentions the ayah, whoever does good deeds, whether a male or a female, and he's a believer, while he's a believer or believing, we will give him a good and pleasant life. Means in this world. And we will reward them and give them the rewards for the best of what they used to do. Means in and if it is doing evil, then that supervision or qayyumiya qayyumiya the noun qayyum the adjective qayyumiya the noun that qayyumiya that supervision that subsisting will be will suit that evil how by showing displeasure and disasters and calamities to that soul so in this there is promise of glad tidings or there are glad tidings and also warning for both sides. SubhanAllah, how he got this amazing meaning from, from this sentence. SubhanAllah. So is, the, is then he who takes charge, who maintains, who provides for every person and knows all that they earn. Like the other gods or the false gods who do nothing and know nothing yet they ascribe partners to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala say name them is it that you will inform him of something he doesn't know on the earth or is it just a show of false words no to those who disbelieve their plotting is made fair seeming is made beautiful is decorated and they have been hindered from the right path and whomever Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allows to go astray there is no guide for him 
The other Wamin Ayatihi from his signs, from the signs that shows you the greatness of Allah and prove to you the greatness of Allah, the existence of Allah, the majesty of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is Wamin Ayatihi and Taqumas Sama wal Ardu bi Amrihi that the heavens and the earth will stand by his command. Surah Al-Rum, chapter 30, ayah 25. From among his signs is that the heavens and the earth stand or subsist. Taquma bi amrihi means what? Taquma. Taqum bi amrihi. That they are subsisting, the heavens and the earth, the planets, the sun, the moon. How they're subsisting? How they're not hitting one another? Those huge planets that are so huge and moving in... in what do they say? Astronomical yeah, speeds, yeah. right? Like, how they're moving, how they're, and they're not like hitting every, كُلُّمْ فِي فَلَكِينْ يَسْبَحُونَ As Allah said, Surah Yasin, لَا الشَّمْسُ يَنْبَغِي لَهَا أَنْ تُدْرِكَ الْقَمَرُ وَلَا اللَّيْلُ سَابِقُ النَّهَارُ وَكُلُّمْ فِي فَلَكِينْ يَسْبَحُونَ The sun cannot precede the moon, and the moon cannot, and everyone revolving in its own orbit. So from among his signs is that the heavens with all what it includes, and the earth, with all what it includes, subsist, taqum, subsist and stand by his command, subhanahu wa ta'ala, by his supervision, by his knowledge and his care. Then when he calls you by a single call from the earth, behold, you all straight away come forth. So he is, subhanahu wa ta'ala, qa'imun bi nafsihi muqimun li ghayrihi, Self-subsisting by whom all subsist. And of course, it's one of the 13 main attributes to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We call it Al-Qiyamu bin Nafs. We explained them before. So this is one of them. Al-Qiyamu bin Nafs. Self-sufficiency. And self-sufficiency, since he is the only one who is self-sufficient and self-subsistent, means everything else is not. So everything else is subsisting by him subhanahu wa ta'ala. So he did not give any self-sufficiency to any creature. It's only him who is self-sufficient. Subhanahu wa ta'ala. We'll stop here, inshallah. There's another very nice ayah that has al-hay and al-qayyum together. We're going to leave it to the next time, inshallah. I'm going to read it to you so that you reflect on it. Surah Taha, chapter 20, ayah 111, 111. Surah Taha, 111. وَعَنَتِ الْوُجُوهُ لِلْحَيِّ الْقَيُّومِ وَقَدْ خَابَ مَنْ حَمَلَ ظُلْمًا وَعَنَتِ الْوُجُوهُ لِلْحَيِّ الْقَيُّومِ You remember we said the Qayyum comes always together except for in, in the word Qayyum comes uh, with the word Al-Hayy. Almost in all of the places in the Quran. وَعَنَتِ الْوُجُوهُ لِلْحَيِّ الْقَيُّومِ So Qayyum mentioned three times in the Quran. In the whole Quran mentioned three times. In all of them, it's mentioned with Al-Qayyum. In all of these three times, it's mentioned with Al-Qayyum. And the word Al-Hayy mentioned two times separate. So the word Al-Hay five times, the word Al-Qayyum three times, three times common. Al-Hay and Al-Qayyum together. There is a very important reason for this. Inshallah, we'll reflect on this ayah more and we'll move to the next parts of Ayat Al-Kursi. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us of those who listen to the speech and follow its best. Allahumma salli wa sallim wa barik ala Sayyidina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahabihi ajma'in. Walhamdulillahi rabbil alameen.